All right, welcome. Okay, it's the 30th of June. This is GitLab, plug GitLab Plugin Modernization Project. So items, I've got action item report planned. Do we need to discuss further on the second milestone, Harsh? What would you like to discuss as other topics? Like I made the draft PR for the second milestone, but whatever a code I wrote, I just pushed it to GitHub so that people, so that the mentors could check if I'm on the right direction on the second milestone or not, because I was not able to uh, make the second milestone, like the code run interactively. So I would like to debug things a bit because, I, but I'm not able to debug it because of the 404 errors that I'm getting. I'll discuss a, a bit about more, more on this, but not the, like, I don't think so. We should be discussing the project, like not the project, the milestone to plan as such. Okay, good. So discussion of the, so it's more discussion of the the draft pull the draft pull request. Great. All right. That starts the second milestone. Is that a is that a good way to say it? Yeah. Okay. All right. And any other topics? Let's see. Are you comfortable with the recording for the midterm presentation? Do we need to discuss? Oh, not recording. It's no longer recording. recording. It's not a recording, yeah, I, is it? Yeah, I, I'm giving a live one. Like we rehearsed uh, yesterday, I think. So it, it's going good. Okay. And we, I think we should talk about upcoming timeline just to be sure that we're all aligned there. Any other topics that need to go on our list today? Like you can update the exams from 6th from sixth of July to 7th of July. Yes. Thank you. Very good. Okay. Yeah, so I'll I'll give I'll give an update about like the total things like the first milestone, the second milestone, and about the midterm presentation. Like I had a question about the midterm presentation. Can I use the because the uh, the pull request for the first milestone is not yet merged, but I I'll have to use the development version, the HPI of the plugin that that it will be creating. So can I use it if it's unmerged, like in the yes. demo? Yes, absolutely. Because uh, the, the like the problems are kind of minor, like. It, it will mm -hmm. not happen because I have a perfect working test connection, so it will not show up. So can I do that? Like, I think that. Yes, no, no reason not to just use, you are welcome to use it. Certainly, I think it's desirable to have it merged, but you can demonstrate from the fact that you've saved it and pushed it publicly is already yeah. makes it worth demonstrating. Okay, so like uh, I already told about the first milestone, like uh, I... First one, I I messed up with uh, one thing like uh, um, it uh, the test connection the thing the, the web only thing of the test connection I messed up with the exception part because I I thought that invocation target exception will be going with the GitLab API exception and it will be catched and it will not show an error but somehow we're showing the error so I'll I'll dig more into it so seeing what's the, what the hell happened how did I miss that but yeah that's one left problem in the first milestone and the other problem was. I and Chris were trying to also make the tests work. Like, and for that, we started using the GitLab rule, which she created a GitLab mock server. And the thing, the, the, the problem is like the, the GitLab mock server that we have does not have a user yet. So I'll have to, uh, I'll have to add a user data to it and then see if the client builder is working correctly or not with it. If it does not work, we'll have to redesign the connection tests, like the connection tests which are available in the first milestones, like the, pull request. If it does work, then it's, 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 of course it's great. So that's the update on the test part. Other than that, I don't know. I don't think so. Any other tests are failing uh, other than the JSON responses that are not matching. Those were due to the type differences between the null values. So I couldn't get it like how the, how the null values could have different type issues, but uh, it, it wasn't Chris pointed it out. So other than this, I think the tests are quite good. Not, not a problem. I'll have to work on the connection tests, of course. And more uh more on the second milestone like i wrote the code and the code is compiling of course it's, it's no problem i i also worked a bit on the testing part of the second milestone yeah right it's like sorry i'm not yeah, keeping so up worked... yeah 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 that's that's what i saw like okay all right so, so, so but so it's not a problem i'm speaking very fast so that's why the the first thing was the second milestone you the second thing you mentioned was working on the test what was the first yeah, item I... say that again yeah, I started working on the tests. I, what I did was I was migrating the webhook, like the normal hook implementation, which was available as JSON to be used in the test to uh, to, my, uh, to adapting the same thing to the webhook events so that they can also be used in the test. So that's what I did. 
but uh, like it's not yet complete i was just working parallelly in a lot of things this week just so that i could push most of the things like so that the only thing which is left is the blockers that i'm facing which could be resolved in the last week so that's what i did this week so all the things which are left now are blockers which i'm not able to resolve so i'll i'll i'm using some help here and there with chris and other than this the second milestone i'll i was i was getting a 404 error which i was not really expecting like uh, i didn't really change the get dynamic method uh, which gets the stapler request and the response from the jenkins code but still it's giving me a 404 error which i don't know why so i'll have to figure it out i tried using my debugger but i but i can't really use it because the GitLab, the, the problem is the Jenkins code is not either giving response to the GitLab plugin or the GitLab plugin is not able to take the response. If the GitLab plugin is not able to take the response, then um, it's, 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 it's not much possible. Like I don't, I can't think of a scenario where GitLab plugin is not able to take the response and the request. But if it's happening, then also I'll have to see, but I'm not able to debug it. So yeah, that's one issue that I was facing. Other than this, yeah, that's, these are the things which I did this week. Thank you. So I was typing as fast as I could, Harsh. Did I capture the things that you were describing? Oh, don't worry. If if it's not, I'll I'll describe it more briefly. If uh, I I can edit the meeting notes, right? So it's not much of a problem. You certainly can. Okay. Is that is yeah. that four hundred four coming from the test or from? The production, no, the production code environment. So you're, so you get, so I'm trying to understand the scenario here. You ran a test with a webhook on a, yeah. on a, yeah, exactly. a regular Jenkins controller, not from a unit test. And then you got a 404 from Jenkins. Yeah. And could you get the same, did you get the same error? on the old version of the GitLab plugin or only with your new version? Yeah, the, the new version, the older version that I was using, I was not getting any 404, uh, 404s with the requests that I was sending. The newer version in, in which I changed the webhook implementation quite a bit, like from the webhook, sure. from webhook, the CG's webhook to the GitLab for JS event type. So there I think I, I am I'm assuming that that's causing the problem. I don't know. I'll have to debug it. Yeah. Um... <clears throat> I would, I would set a breakpoint on the place where the Jenkins yeah. controller is doing the redirection, and I think that's there's a stapler method for doing a redirection. Yeah. Um, I I'm sure that it would be easy to find um, if you haven't found it already. But uh, you know, basically, once you have a breakpoint on that method, you should see you know some kind of call hierarchy. And your goal would be to move backward in time uh, and try to find, because by by the point you're in the stapler method to to report the uh, 404, actually, I'm sorry, I didn't mean redirection. I meant uh, I meant the error handler, basically, the whatever is, yeah. uh, well, I mean, I, I'm actually, no, maybe, maybe I'm assuming that something is, I'm, I'm assuming that you're being redirected to a page that doesn't exist. So is that, was, was like that what you were seeing? Like, let me explain you a bit more on what I did. You are on the right line. So what I yeah. what I was thinking was I I got the Jenkins core uh, like the uh, repository, and I'll have to use the Jenkins core as well as the GitLab plugin both and debug both at the same kind of mm -hmm. the same time because like what happens is the Jenkins core sends a um, request to the get dynamic method of the GitLab plugin, and mm -hmm. I'll have to see how that thing is going just so that I could pick up where the 404 is coming so that I could fix it. That's what uh, that's what I'm thinking. But like. Debugging both of them at the same time, it's it's kind of a messy thing there. So yeah, I was just trying to make sure that I'm pinpointing the right issue because I don't think so there could be a problem there. Like it is quite unlikely that GitLab plugin is unable to receive the request from the like uh, Jenkins code. So that's that's what I was thinking. Like it, it's just a hypothesis that I have. So yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. So I would, yeah, like I said earlier, I'd find the stapler method that is doing the redirection and see if you can see what called it, because that's the, by the time we're getting the redirection to the bad URL, we've already gone off the rails, but uh, setting a breakpoint there can at least show you a stack trace that hopefully 
a previous frame in that stack trace. Yeah. We'll show you the place before we went off the rails. Um, so even, you know, so for example, you know, you might, you might get a stack trace that leads you to stapler redirection. And one of the previous stack frames is like line 50, you know, but that, by that point we're off the rails, but it might be that we made the mistake at like line 25 of that function, but it's, I'm hoping that it's in the same stack trace. So that, that's how I would debug a problem like yeah. that. Basically find, yeah, like find the place that, to, to make it a generic piece of advice, find the place where you're off the rails and then work backwards to find the last place that you were still on track. And yeah. that should be hopefully a few steps away from where you're off, off track. But uh, like uh, what I am intuitively feeling is uh, the, the field which I have was like, I didn't really change much in the get dynamic method of the GitLab plugin. I just added some event handlers there just so I could redirect to the, to the different methods that I created in the GitLab plugin. So it's like, for me, it's kind of unlikely that any change that I did in the get dynamic method of the GitLab plugin is causing that change. But yeah, of course I'll do that. As you said, like I had this thing in my mind but I just wanted to convey it so that if, if if something else could have been popped up, so yeah, that's what I did. Yeah, when, so when you're dealing with that. when you're dealing with event hand, event handling logic, it may not be as simple as just going up the stack trace because basically yeah. asynchronous programming breaks stack traces. So, but but conceptually, it's a similar idea, right? Um, even if even if it's a little bit harder with asynchronous events, the same you can apply the same concept of of finding, uh, finding the place where you're off the rails, and then trying to work backwards uh, to the last point in which things were still on track. Um, so, and that's one of the that's one of the most uh, that's one of the most annoying things about asynchronous programming. Some there are some frameworks that will stitch together stack traces from different asynchronous events, and I'm not I'm not sure if uh, if whatever library we're using can do that. But um, that's definitely something to, to, it's definitely more difficult. So um, there's, there's, uh, there's nothing, um, nothing unexpected about it being hard to debug, I'm afraid. Uh, but hopefully you'll be able to figure it out. Yeah, I'll try something. I, I've been into bad situations a lot of times. I'll figure something out. And one, one more request that I had was, like the second pull request, like the draft pull request for the second milestone, which I made, I want you guys to actually see through the code. If you could provide me some guidance on the design that I was like, I had to repeat the metal methods a lot of times because of the, uh, the overriding of the methods I ha that I had to do. So if you could just glance over the code that I wrote to provide some guidance on the design that, that if it's right, if, if, if the code logic could be better or the code design could be better, then that would be great. So this is the draft pull request, right? Yeah, the draft pull request of the second milestone. Okay. And your specific concern, Harsh, was that you were seeing some cases where there's some duplication of code that you thought yeah, might be avoidable? Overriding. Yeah, like it it might not be avoidable, but like I am not that pro, right? So if you could see some things which I'm not able to see, beforehand like before i make it actual um, a milestone and if it starts working then great of course but if before i make it uh, make it an actual pull request it, it would be better if i get some reviews on the draft it, itself so that i can improve upon them faster great okay so but i think i captured what you're saying that there you see you you have implemented in the draft pull request some du code duplication that allows you to compile it allows the thing to yeah. sort of behave the way you were hoping but you'd yeah. love guidance if there are if others can see ways that hey that code duplication could be reduced or eliminated by different some by different structure yeah okay yeah. great Anything yeah, else? So that's what okay. I did in this week. Like, yeah. Thank you. Thanks very much. Anything else on that second milestone? That sounds like you're 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 looking forward to reviews. And I apologize. I still owe you more testing. My weekend's coming, so I hope to do testing. I don't have 
work on Tuesday next week. So I I apologize that my interactive testing hasn't happened yet. I am sorry, sincerely. Yeah, it is fine. I I tested it this morning and it seems like it's it's pretty good, aside from that the uh, exception problem that we already discussed. Yeah, uh, that angry Jenkins thing. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll see to it. Everything else looks pretty good. Um, I removed, I pushed a few commits to remove even more transitive dependencies that we don't need. So it's a lot lighter than it, uh, we have few, fewer, because um, a lot of the plugins that we depended on were only needed to support the rest easy implementation. Rest things things oh, like I the- uh, something. Well, it, no, that's that's fine because it's not very it's not very obvious uh, to uh, to a beginner how our our library plugins are packaged. But I removed yeah I removed a few more. I removed uh, the JaxB plugin and the Apache yeah, HTTP yeah, components plugin. plugin and a few others uh, yeah. that were only okay. needed to support REST Easy in the first place. Um, and I also uh, I also turned off the running of the tests uh, because that was causing the CI build to fail. So I, is this is the plan still to uh, tackle the tests in a different pull request? Because I thought I thought last week we were gonna yeah um, not not worry about the tests in this milestone, but do it in a different one. So is that still the plan? I uh, I just I just wanted to get the tests working because like. In, in between, I, I went into some trouble because of my Git client issues in my Jenkins controller. So I got pretty uncomfortable if the like the, if the milestone one's code is working as I want it to work. That's why I, I put up some amount of time in the tests, but it is not much of a problem. We'll make it uh, into another milestone. Like I need to work on the second milestone quite fast because like it, it is the last week and I want to get it done and I'm getting bugged by this seriously crazy 404. So yeah. Okay, okay. So fine. It's fine. Like, sure. So harsh, just to be sure. So it is still the plan that the it's okay that the current pull request does not run tests. It's okay that or it, it runs yeah. only the limited set that we're whichever is fine. Okay. Yeah. Good. It, it it is kind of okay. And one more thing that I was uh, I was kind of worried about in the test. How is the GitHub uh, GitHub CI CD which we have implemented to run the like the tests? How how is it going to have that? Uh, like the local server, like because we are using the GitLab Docker-based tests, right? It's like it uses the GitLab actual URL that instance that I've created on my local machine. So how is it going to test that? Like, wouldn't it always give me no client builder? So, so what you're really asking is how does ci.jenkins.io run tests that require a yeah. container? Yeah, the, a container or a, a local mock server or something like that, like a local host. Well, so localhost is available in in that context, but containerization means you can't use the the you can't run inside a container because then you can't invoke another container. Uh, yeah. But is that your question? I'm not sure I'm understanding your question. Like because the Docker based tests are depend upon the uh, are depending upon the container, right? So how are the CI uh, the CI tests of the Jen Jenkins that is implemented? going to test that docker based test because they are docker based yeah there's a setting in the jenkins file that does that does that let's go see it if we those look, tests are disabled right even on the main they, page I they thought. are disabled as far as i understand it right but yeah if the day comes that we enable them i think this thing use container container agent true would have to be set to use container agent false because then okay, you could so run docker containers so okay. that's as far as I understand it, this thing changes where the tests run then, where the, the build process runs. And it says, okay, don't use containers. And because it's not using containers, Docker can then be invoked. So I'll look more into the tests uh, as a third milestone or the fourth, whatever it is, because like it, it requires some amount of work from my side to get those JSON, like those JSONs are working like just to get those tidbits right it would uh, require some effort on my side. Right. Well, I, but but I think Basel's right to remind us all that we are perfectly okay that those tests do not run now. They have not run for years. And it's this project would still be a success even if they did not run. 
right? I think I think that's why. Either way, I adapted and, quite a lot of them. Yeah, and it's uh, it's I think it's more important to get the mock, the wire mock tests to work in this project because they they were working in the past, yeah. so they should they should continue to work. But I think you've already noticed that they need some adaptation. I, I don't know how far you've gotten, but I would assume that some of the JSON uh, expected responses need to, uh, yeah, you know, are probably different with that, this new library. Yeah, like they are not that different as you're thinking. Like the types of mismatching, like like the null is mismatching with the null of the different type. That's what I, that's what we were trying to fix, and I got a null pointer exception here and there. But uh, we'll try to fix it soon. Yeah, yeah, you're right about it. I almost did that. Like the JSON response is matching. Yeah, nulls in web service APIs are always a challenge. And and I think there's a, there's a specification called Open API that tries to deal with this by uh, formalizing a schema for you know these web services. And they they have a specification that goes into a lot of detail about you know what uh, what types are returned from each endpoint and how, and how do you deal with things like nullability or optional or default values and things like that. Um, so I, I don't know if, Git, I don't think GitLab is using open API, but it's a very common problem with, with REST API design. Like the problem which I was facing was I couldn't really give null to the with coverage method because if I give a simple null, it would not match due to the type mismatch. If I type convert the null into the different type like a float or long or whatever, it would it would it would actually match, but it would give me a null pointer exception because the methods that are being run on the null due to conversion to the float type will give me some random null pointer exceptions that I'll have to fix. And yeah, yeah, I wasted a day on that. I know that pain. All right. Okay, so yeah, that's what I did on the test. Like nothing more. I don't think so. I have any other blockers other than the deadline that I have that I have to complete the second milestone fast. Okay, so so are there? We've talked about the pull request for the second milestone. Are there other pull requests that you wanted to discuss? I think we've covered oh. them all. Okay. okay. Anything that you want to ask about on the midterm presentation? You feel comfortable there? I know we rehearsed yesterday. You showed me the demo yesterday. It felt like it went okay and was just fine. Yeah, so it was as expected, and like like I hope it would be as expected uh, in the midterm presentation also. And my Git client won't like disturb my life that that day. But yeah, whatever. Yeah, I think I'm quite comfortable with it. Great. Now on the upcoming timeline, I know your exams are seven July now. Do they do they last for a week? How how yeah. long will you be? So seven July through fourteen July. Yeah. Okay, so should we cancel this session that would normally happen next? Would it would happen what next Friday on the seventh? Yeah, we should, it seems like we should cancel this session, and do we then meet on the fourteenth? You'll be presenting on the sixth, or is the fourteenth still examinations for you? Is are you so, are your exams yeah, we can, we done can by the end the of the 14th. day on the fourteenth or because yeah it, it will be done because that week like I, it it will be very intensive because it's an end semester examination and I have to study a lot for that so it's it's going to be kind of like excessive studies that uh, week so I will be able to do a much less work in that week so yeah I think you should be putting it in the fourteenth. So and the project meet of course and and, uh, and the GSOC office hours I'll attend don't worry about it. Okay, well, so we could we could also cancel the fourteenth if that's going to be disruptive to your examination no. schedule. So we want to be no. sure that your your examinations are that you have the best chance to succeed at your exams. Like the examinations will be over, and after that, of course, I can join the meeting. But it's not a much of a problem to me. Okay, great. So I will cancel our next session for the seventh, and we'll plan to meet the fourteenth. Okay. And as always, I want to remind myself that we're okay on the checklist. So the next milestone is July. Oh, the next milestone for us as mentors is 
midterm evaluations begin July 10, and then we have to submit, uh, and we get to submit one evaluation. So I'll work Basel with you and with Chris to get your feedback, and then I'll be the one who submits it if that's okay with you. So I do the bookkeeping. Like so, I get I get the feedback or I give the feedback. Like I don't. Both you will you will be expected, I think, to provide your own evaluation. But then we, I provide an evaluation, and you'll then, I think you then see that evaluation after I've submitted it. Like, so I'll also give an evaluation to what? I like believe to so. I, I believe so. I, I don't know if it's to the mentors or to yourself, but I believe there is an evaluation that you submit. Chris, can you clarify? I think that's how it works for the, the contributor. I think so, yeah. They have to give an evaluation of the project. So the organization, the mentors. So, so you you provide an evaluation, and we provide an evaluation, and and if if for some reason you don't get our copy of the evaluation, let us know because our intent is that it should help you. Um, but, yeah, but, uh, uh, I want to yeah, add like, the part by the contributor is optional. I think. Oh, oh, okay. So it may be that that he's not that Harsh is not required to submit an evaluation. Yeah, I think it was like that last year too, but it wasn't that before, like many years ago, was it required. So look for Harsh about July 10, look for email from, from Google Summer of Code inviting you to submit an evaluation. Uh, I apologize that it's right in the middle of your exams, uh, but that's what I was worrying about actually. How much time will it be taking? Like what I have to do? Keep it brief, right? Your okay. your your efforts on writing that evaluation should not should not take do not spend much time on that. Spend yeah, keep it simple. Okay. All right. Any other topics we need to discuss today? So after the like the midterm evaluation, the second, the last, of course, the second phase of the second coding phase will start, right? Correct. That is correct. Right. Okay. Very good. So we second second half coding begins. Is it July fourteen? I I should look at the checklist. Midterm demo. Oh, it doesn't even list it. The final week is August 21 through 28. So yes, as soon as as soon as yeah. you're back from examinations, we start the second phase. Yeah. We start the second half, and that will continue until mid-August, until August 21. Okay. Oh, oh, and I have to I have to forewarn actually. I've got one which is July uh July 21. Mark is out of the office playing with his grandchildren, playing with grandchildren. So, Chris, would you be willing to host the meeting on that day? Uh, sure, yeah. But oh, remind me, though. I, I will do so. So we'll meet the 14th, and I'll certainly remind everyone that I'm gone the next the next Friday. Anything okay, else, so Harsh? Like, oh. Yeah. What are the possible worries that the mentors are having? Like any possible before the like the next thing starts? Like uh, we are almost at the end of the coding phase one, right? So before then the coding phase two starts, what are the things which are bugging you right now about the project? Anything? Okay, my my non-performance as a tester is bugging me, but that's nothing you can affect. <laughs> Uh, I'd look to others if Basil or Chris, if you've got concerns or worries that you want to express. I think it's going well so far. I mean, uh, I took another look at the code this morning and it looked very close to uh, to finished, uh, at least for that first milestone. So I, th I think it's going pretty well. Uh, nothing special for me. All right. All right. Any other topics to discuss? No, not for me. Okay. Let's let's call this one done then. Thank you very much. I'll stop the recording.